All right. Good morning, Savannah. This is Taraz with the Savannah Business Showcase. Uh, I'm your host. And this morning, I have a very special guest, a uh, guest that I just met, mm -hmm. but I'm excited that I just met because I come into most of these with an open mind, uh, open book. I don't know what I'm going to learn about a person, but uh, I Googled Cherie Darian before I came and I found out so much and I'm so excited to introduce her to everybody out there listening who doesn't know her already. Uh, so my guest is Cherie Darian. She's currently a community uh, development loan officer with the SBAC, which is the Small Business Assistance Corporation here in Savannah, right off Liberty Street. Uh, she uh, specializes in a lot of loan programs uh, for small businesses and entrepreneurs that I'm sure she'll tell you about here in just a second. Um, if you don't know about the SBAC, um, I didn't know much about them, but they serve the Savannah and the Low Country area. Uh, they manage 13 different loan programs sponsored by the SBA and the Small Business Association. Uh, the state of Georgia, the USDA, and the city of Savannah. Uh, they offer micro loans up to 50000 offer real estate loans up to $5.5 million, um, serves fi services 53 counties in southeast Georgia, as well as uh, Beaufort, Charleston, uh, Colleton, I don't know if I said that right, Dorchester, Hampton, and Jasper counties. Uh, what else? Yeah, so I, I'll let you introduce yourself now. Well, actually, no, I won't. <laughs> what, what we're going to do is, it's a, so the, the goal of the show, okay, is to inspire, motivate uh, entrepreneurs who are just sitting on the sidelines to have an idea. So uh, in order to introduce you in the best way possible, what, so here's the situation. You're walking in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. in your neighborhood, a uh, young kid comes up to you and says, they say, Sheree, you're, you're my hero. I want to be just like you when I grow up, okay? So in language that a, 10 or 12 y'all can understand what does it take to be Sheree Darian oh my god that's a loaded <laughs> <laughs> question <laughs> Therese I just told you before we got on <laughs> my family are looking at me like who is this woman oh my god um f to that kid I would honestly say what is it that you want to do never ever compare yourself to another person mm. we are all here um, we all have an individual, very unique purpose. And so don't be me. Honestly, I would tell them, don't be me. I'm me. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. only one. I'm the original. There is not a copy. And so to be you, what is it that you like to do? Mm -hmm. Just start with that. Honestly, to be honest, because I'm doing me. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I'm reinvent. I'm exactly this Cherie that you're speaking to today mm -hmm. is completely different than the person I was just three years ago. And as we continue this conversation, I will share with you um, why I say that. Okay, so uh, so who are you? So introduce yourself, now you have a chance to introduce yourself. So who, who Good are segue, you? right? <laughs> Great segue. <laughs> well, I am uh, Cherie. As the young man asked me on the way in, he said, Cherie E. Daring, what does the E stand for? And she is uh, Cherie Edelma Darian. And I say that name now with great pride because there was a time when I despised that name. <laughs> like, Lord, <laughs> no one else has that name. It sounds like an old woman name. What is up with Edelma? Right. But now uh, in the society we live in, everybody's about branding themselves. Mm -hmm. And they want to be unique and have a niche. Yeah. And Edelma is mine. I own it. Um, all of it. I love it. And so it's unique. And I would say that who Cherie is, is very unique, uh, wonderfully and fearfully made. Mm. I know my worth. Uh, I love empowering women. I'm very transparent. I'm very approachable. I love people. I love stories. Um, and that's why I'm here on the show, not just to share my story, but to hear yours. And of course, reach out to our audience so that they will get in touch with me and, and let's continue their story, whatever that is, uh, their journey. Awesome. So, so where are you from? I am born and raised South Carolina native, okay. just <laughs> across the bridge, uh, Talmadge Bridge. I'm, I'm born and raised right in Jasper County. So I am a Southern girl. Mm. So my mother, so I'm from North Carolina. My mother just recently visited. Uh, and she asked me what was across the bridge, and I didn't know. So what what is across the bridge? Oh, my God. Well, the greatest seafood on earth. <laughs> 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 Barbecue there. We have some of that as okay, well. Okay, okay. Not much else, actually. 
<laughs> me and my family, and, and actually, I live in in Jasper County. I live in Ridgeland. Uh, we're down to I think to two or three stoplights, mm. literally. Okay. So very quaint, small, uh, tight knit community with some beautiful people. But again, not much else. We are, of course, on the East Coast, so yeah. we have access, which is a great privilege to some of the best beaches around. Yeah. But just good people. Yeah. Really. Um. Okay. Good place to start. So uh, before we jump into a little bit more about your story, you're also an author and a coach and a speaker and uh, just an all around amazing woman. So before we jump into that, like, tell me some more about this amazing program you guys have, the uh, organization the SBAC. Well, uh, I call SBAC, of course, the Small Business Assistance Corporation, one of Savannah's and, in fact, the Low Country's best kept secret. Mm. That was before I got here. So. <laughs> <laughs> shameless plug, just shameless plug. But they are. Uh, yeah. I, my background, and I'm just going to just kind of flow into it. Yeah. Um, for the last 10 years of my life, with the exception of the last three, but prior to that, I was uh, a corporate banker. Okay. And I uh, ran Regents Bank in Richland, South Carolina. Okay. I started my banking career at Bank of America as a part-time teller. Mm. I love telling this story because when I did, um, my children were very small. And I have four wonderful children. I have mm -hmm. to, of course, put that plug in as a mommy. <laughs> but um, they were really small at the time. And I was commuting from South Carolina uh, to Pooler, Georgia. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the midst of that, I had this moment, almost like an epiphany moment, like, Lord, I am too far away from them. They're so small. If they needed mommy throughout the course of the day, I mean, I'm in Georgia, there in South Carolina. I need you to do something and open up another door. And so I was there uh, for a very brief period of time. I'm thinking bef between December and April is how my banking career uh, mm. started. Mm -hmm. And I, I said a small prayer. And God answered. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result, uh, an opportunity presented itself at Regions Bank. Yeah. Uh, again, starting at the bottom, I worked myself straight up to the top as an assistant vice president of the bank. Oh, awesome. And uh, and so three years ago, another epiphany moment, yeah. I, I was dissatisfied um, where I was in my career, just from a personal standpoint. And I wanted a more fulfilling, rewarding career. Now, granted, I had the salary, I had the staff, I had all the perks that came with a corporate career, but I, but I didn't have that internal fire, if you will. Yeah. And there was something else more uh, that I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to answer the call. I wanted to fulfill my purpose. I wanted to serve that tight knit community in a better capacity. Mm -hmm. And most people I was not able to help mm. um, for various reasons. Um, corporate banking has its own appetite of customers in which it chooses to serve mm. as with any business. Yeah. Uh, and I just wasn't, I didn't feel in proper alignment with what I had uh, chosen to do with my life. And so I decided to take a leap of faith and that threw me into three years on the backside of the desert, as I like <laughs> to say, in preparation for where I am now. Uh, ironically, I left with a clear intention of not just working for a bank, but for to work um, and hopefully own eventually one day a CDFI. Okay. Uh, CDFI is a community development financial institution. How we are different is we provide access to capital to those that uh, cannot readily receive it at traditional banks. That's what SBAC is. And uh, my job specifically as community development loan officer is to share the breadth of uh, wisdom and knowledge about our mission which is exactly that. We provide gap financing. Again, you did your excellent research <laughs> on our portfolio. We have a small steps program that starts as small as $2,500 for your small business owners that are out there needing to establish business credit. And then, of course, we go up uh, to over $5.5 million, both local and federal dollars. Mm. This is exactly where I'm supposed to be at my life. I'm very, very clear on that because for me, Taraz is not – a job yeah it is a calling uh, I take it very personal it's mm -hmm. very deep for me uh, so it's not just a paycheck remember I, I did that yeah yeah and uh, so that's just a little bit about me in the midst of that three-year window I was very fortunate to again write a couple of books travel spoke uh, hosted a women's um, retreat uh, 
and launch a talk show. So I'm very comfortable okay, in okay. this setting. Okay. Uh, and um, so, and it's all about really sharing. I was able to, of course, pin my story in two books. And uh, that, of course, opened up another platform um, with the talk show where I just extend my platform for others to share their stories. And now with SBAC, I get to now connect my personal life to my business life. As an entrepreneur, I when I left banking, I opened my own um, business on the corner of Main Street. I invested over $12,000 and lost it in a matter of 12 weeks. Ooh. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. So I want to want the audience to really get um, that I'm a real person with a real story. I understand uh, the growing pains with starting a business. I've made some mistakes, so they don't need to make the same. I'm here to pay that for it, um, but also to provide the resources. We're talking about money, mm-hmm. uh, but not just money. And what I'm finding, uh, and you have to stop me because when I go, I just go. No, no, go ahead. We're, we're going to dive deeper to some of this stuff you're breezing through. Okay. But but go ahead. What they're going to find is that um, what I'm finding since I've been on at SBAC that a lot of um, exp- aspiring small business owners and entrepreneurs aren't ready. They aren't loan ready yet. Mm-hmm. And so um, rejection, a lot of people receive no uh, as a final. It's not a final. It's just where are you on your journey to becoming an entrepreneur. And so mm-hmm. for what I'm finding is that many of them need technical assistance, which I'm so proud to share that we have that. We don't just have the financing and the expertise from the loan standpoint, but we also have the technical assistance available too. And that's in the form of some of our partners, such as SCORE and SBDC. I understand you had Mark Butler on Mm -hmm. recently, so shout out to you guys and the great work that you do. But they help with the business plans. They help with the projections. We actually uh, sit down or they sit down with the business owners to get them ready before they can come to me. Because what I'm having to do is kind of get that bow and arrow effect Mm -hmm. and pull folks back so that they can really go far when we Mm -hmm. let them go. Mm -hmm. But what I'm finding is many of them aren't ready yet. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So you breezed over a lot of stuff. And I wanted, we have, we have about probably about 20, 25 minutes before we have to take a break. So. Um, first, okay, SBAC. So what what does it what what is a a person who wants to come to you? What's what is it? You said most people aren't loan ready. Mm-hmm. So what is it? What is loan ready to you? Loan ready means you you can truly articulate your business, your business plan, what it what it looks like. Now, granted, you may be, and and I'm so passionate, so. It, you know, I get excited. Yeah. So <laughs> it may be a thought, just yeah. an idea of a product or service that you want to bring to the market. Mm-hmm. Or you may have a true product in place. You may mm-hmm. be an existing business looking to grow or even expand. Mm-hmm. It's just where are you in your journey to entrepreneurship mm. is what's going to help us. And so if you're crystal clear that uh, that's one thing. Second thing is credit. Where are you with your credit? Have okay. you pulled your credit report this year? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you know what your credit number is? <laughs> credit report. You know what I mean? Right, right. Th- that's like basic. These are the basic things. Okay, so then we get into the financial aspect and your profit and loss statement, your balance sheet. How is uh, your cash flow? Mm-hmm. If it's a brand new business, you don't have cash flow yet because it's speculative. And so everything is basically on a projected basis. Mm -hmm. But do you know what that is? Um, Again, I just get so happy with with this work (laughs) because it's it's work, but it's not a job to me. Right. And so uh, those are just some of the things, uh, those basic things. If they have that, then we can really talk. Okay. so what history do you have with owning a business? Have Mm -hmm. you ever owned a business before? Have you always worked for someone else? Because right there, that's a great learning curve. Mm hmm. Um, that speaks to us. Uh, what about your um, repayment ability? Mm-hmm. So we talked about cash flowing before. Can you do that? Do you have collateral? Yeah. Okay. What is your skin in the game? So before I just say no, you know, I can tell uh, usually within the first few minutes of the conversation with an aspiring business owner or even someone that's been in business for a while doing it the hard way Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of good people that are already in business but they're so busy uh, working in 
the mm. business that they're not working on the business mm -hmm. and i can share a little bit more about that later okay um so there is a person for example uh let's do a scenario sure. okay there's a person who has a business um it's not it's not going well or it's, it's going well but they're just completely consumed with, like when should a person who already owns a business come see you for lending what would be a great time for them to get along to help expand their business if they are struggling and, and I want to make sure I understand your scenario if they are struggling in their business but they have a funding need they still need to start with their business plan mm. because something either they don't have one or it needs to be re revised and the business plan it's a working living breathing document you don't write it once and that's it mm. you use it to track yourself your progress and your growth now granted you may set goals and then life happens we spoke about that earlier mm -hmm. offline and then you need to shift you need to make some adjustments well that's just it life happens and so you need to be able to do that but you need to do the work you need to go back and adjust the business plan to be able to get back where you need to go and that's part of where we are so for that business owners you're struggling right now you're not loan ready you need to be clear of most people think automatically that they need more money mm -hmm. to solve their problems that not that's not necessarily it there may be systems that they need to get in place in order to make sustainable profit mm -hmm. And so it's really education piece on the front end, not so much just the default, oh, I need more money to put this fire out, because typically that's just what you're doing. Just putting the fire out instead of solving the problem. Yes. Mm. Your symptoms, you're not getting to the root. And what we wanted you to do is set you up for success. At the end of the day, I lend money. <laughs> right. And we want to get paid back. <laughs> yeah. So I do, I'm right. really yeah. straight, yeah. Uh, again, very transparent, yeah. very honest, that's yeah. that that's really it. Think about, I, I like to use the, the Monopoly game because usually people know about that. But mm -hmm. if I came, you say you came to me for a loan for $100,000, I want to reverse the role. I want to put the money in your hand. I become you, you become me, you have the cash. Based on what you're saying to me about your business, would you give me that money? Mm. I mean, your cash money. Most no. people yeah, aren't going to do yeah, that. No. And so it's a shifting of the, the mindset. You be the lender, become me. I'm gonna share your story to you and then you tell me if it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Just on a very basic level, no judgment, just identification mm -hmm. of what we're working with. And if there's enough skin in the game and if it makes sense, then it's easier to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you just have a good story, now granted my heart loves stories. I'm an author, I'm mm -hmm. a speaker, I'm an empowerment, I'm a coach. So I love helping people help themselves. And that's essentially what we're doing at SBAC. We're just not just, you know, talking about out money. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no, no. This is real business making a real impact in this community. And in Savannah is prime. Yeah. It is prime. I've never worked in Savannah, L always lived here in South Carolina in the low country, you know, visited, of course, it's, we're like neighbors, but this opportunity is amazing. And mm -hmm. there's so many other doors that are opening up. I'm sorry, opening. And so partnership opportunities are at an all time high right now. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent time. Even if someone hasn't already started a business, they need to get into it now. There's mm -hmm. so many opportunities. It's amazing. It's an incredible time. It's good to know. I'm working on something right now. Oh, fabulous. So it's good to know. <laughs> yeah. So that hopefully that inspires somebody. It does. Uh, it inspires <laughs> me. So it inspires somebody. Good, 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 good. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's. For, well, I want to reiterate, you said that a business plan is a living, breathing document. I really like that. So I just want to make sure the listeners understand that, that you always have to update it. Yes. Um, so let's jump back into you. So uh, you've written two books. What are your books and what were they about? Okay. So the first book, remember all women empowerment, right? Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a mommy and a wife and yeah. all of that. So I, 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 I'm a... I was raised by six women. Okay, raised, so you get it. So I, I get it. Okay, cool. Me. So the first book was with a former colleague at Regions Bank, Michelle Grandy, love you, sis. And that book was uh, entitled, Oh, Amazing Wellness, Shift Your Vision and Create the Healthy, Happy Lifestyle That You Deserve. I'm impressed you still remember the oh, subtitle and everything. I'm, 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 I'm but, in it. It's in my veins. <laughs> but it's OM, like O-H-M, right? I did look that up. Sorry? Is it, It's OM. You said OM, OM amazing? OM amazing. O-H-H, -H, I think. O-H-H. Okay, o -H -H. Okay, something okay, like that. Okay. Yeah, OM amazing wellness. And, and really, um, it was 31 women from across the globe, one as far as Africa, mm. on that um, uh, book. It was an anthology project. It, mm. Michelle, of course, uh, compiled all of the stories 
and uh, it was really um, like the red carpet for me as an author yeah. because I was able to, it was really my prelude to my own book, which I knew since the year 2000 that I would write. Mm. So we, of course, that was birth in 2014. I knew 14 years earlier that I would always write a book. Mm. I just didn't know when. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I yeah. just, you know, yeah. it's people call it writer's block. I knew it wasn't the right time, but I always had a burning desire to write the book. So that um, opened the door, of course. That was the red carpet for my book, which is Testimony, A Second Chance, Crossroads, Making the Next Time the Best Time. And again, you know, excited about that. I'm all about second chances. Um, I believe second is just anything after the num the number one. So it's not necessarily the number two. Yeah. It could be 2002. I'm all about hitting a reset button, extending grace to yourself as much as we send it to someone else. And I have so many stories. In fact, I, I pride myself on having a PhD in second chances <laughs> and uh, two black belts, <laughs> Therese, in overcoming and enduring <laughs> life hardships. And I so like I that, want yeah. people to know that, listen, <laughs> if I could get up and, you know, grab my bootstraps and keep it moving you have no excuse and i think we shared that early no excuse, yeah. straight out of excuses yeah. and so the book i'm very excited about was able to um release that book and again in this three-year window i had an opportunity to really do some internal work that's really what was mm. going on it was preparation for me i had i was a mother a wife um had a career but believe it or not and I, I still, at this day, serve on several boards within our community, everything from the chamber to the Technical College of the Low Country and some other the charter schools, you name it. Mm -hmm. So very um, involved. involved in my community. Uh, but I was wearing a lot of hats. And this is just a moment of transparency because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. You ask me who I am, I'm mm -hmm. very transparent, naked, unashamed, and unapologetic. <laughs> Don't yeah. make any excuses for it. Um, <laughs> Free as a bird. You yeah, know? I got you. <laughs> you okay. <tell? laughs> I can tell. It's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm enthralled. I'm, I'm here with you. So um, in the midst of that preparation, I had to do some deep work within me. I wore a lot of hats, served in banking and on these boards and community, everything. And I was lost. Mm. I was really lost. I uh, didn't know what I wanted out of life. I was just going very um, obedient nature, mm -hmm. uh, raised that way. And so I was used to looking up to authority figures and obeying them, but I didn't know who I was at that time, yeah. which is what, to my point earlier of not knowing who I was, mm -hmm. the person that I am today is totally different. Like my life is barely recognizable. I'd look the same, mm -hmm. but I'm completely different. Mm. And so I did some internal work on, on myself, meaning on the inside. And I, I would go into a room and someone would always comment, you're so beautiful, you're so pretty. I was so miserable. Mm. And so it took an opportunity, it took three years almost, <laughs> of really just kind of getting quiet and getting still and doing the inside work. Yeah. So what looked like it was so much beauty on the outside actually matched what was on the inside. So that's the person you're meeting today. What, what, was, the, what was the catalyst for the change? I got, it was a aha at the job. Like that was my thing. Like this, I can't do this. I'm not making an impact. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting paid. I want to make an impact on other people's life with mine. Hmm. And so I've had a series of those moments. Um, my very first, um, someone asked uh, last week, I was on a panel and they, one of the questions was, when did you know you were a leader? When you first know that you could possibly be a leader. And it was, I attended um, Rapport Leadership International, a, a weekend workshop. Mm -hmm. And during that weekend, I, um, that was my aha. Mm. I, I got really just doused into that atmosphere. It's totally different from South Carolina where I was. I was in Nevada. Yeah. And so I was outside of my comfort zone. I had never been introduced to this magnitude of leadership. And it was in that moment that I realized that I uh, had a, my block to leadership was rejection, mm. which is why I'm so passionate you know, helping people overcome no. Mm -hmm. Like, no doesn't mean never. It just means right now. Yeah. It's something that you need to do first to get ready. Mm -hmm. 
like my three year window, I need to get ready for where I am now. I would probably bit butcher up this opportunity if I was not ready. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So now I'm really ready. And I believe in order to be the, um, oh, what is it? It's like venom, you know, in order to be the cure, you got to first be affected. Mm. And so I don't speak just out of head knowledge. I lived it. Mm hmm. I lived it. So anyway, when I transitioned out of corporate banking, I opened that business and talked about um, losing that money, but I didn't tell you why. How I lost that money, first of all, was overhead. I did not need the overhead. So this is uh, a lesson to your uh, listeners that are out there. Sometimes we make mistakes because we're so eager. Like It's like a, a mother with a new bo newborn baby. That's what my business was to me. Mm. I was so charged and excited and passionate and ready to go with what I thought I was going to save the world, basically, yeah. you know, uh, that I really didn't count the cost accurately enough. And so I ran out there. So I'm hoping others will learn from my mistake. And my audience did not need me to have a, a business location mm. because I went to them yeah. at their business. So while I was I had all this overhead to have a physical brick and mortar space, I didn't need it. And so I ran through, it was a lot of mistakes that I made and I could go into that on an individual basis. Um, but that was one of my first mistakes. What I didn't see coming, which is what ultimately made me close the business, was my mother was diagnosed with two forms of cancer six weeks into my transition. Oh man, sorry to hear that. We did not see that coming at all. Granted, I would have stayed where I was here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're real, right? <laughs> right. I mean, you think about your You're security right. blanket. Yeah. I would have literally stayed there if I knew all of this. Oh, my chaos really was about to take place. But I mean, good came out of it. Mm -hmm. So and for me, the good was I was able to be there with her. I mm -hmm. made a cognitive decision to close the business gotcha. so that I could be with my mother. Gotcha. It was terminal, mm -hmm. which means six weeks later, total of 12 weeks. She was gone. Mm. So my mom died one week before Christmas after I left banking, started this business, invested this money, decided to close it down. So nothing imped my ability to be with her yeah. literally to the day she took her last breath. I closed her eyes, got one warm kiss and that was it. Mm. But here I have what I'm going to do with myself. And so this is what I mean by grabbing those bootstraps and pull yourself up. And this is why I'm so passionate about the work that I'm doing. Um, and it's Murph, I mean, the books, the talk show, that SBAC now helping other people say, y you can do this. It's up to you. Yeah. Straight out of excuses. Straight out of excuses. Ah, oh, man, I got chills <laughs> listening about your mom. Okay, that's good. Uh, so quickly, yes. uh, tell me about your talk show and, uh, and when you speak, like, what do you, what do you speak about? What do, what do people invite you to hear, hear from you? Really, you know, it's been interesting. Most time people just want to hear my story, mm. my own story. I think they need that that um, tangible example of, gosh, you did all of that. Yeah. Which you don't know, Therese, which is in my book. You need to get a copy. I will. I will. I should have brought you one, but I need to order some, actually. <laughs> my life has been on fast forward for a long time. I'm not sure how much of my story you really want to hear, but this is what people want to hear. Okay. Um, or I, I think they connect to, it resonates with them. Um, again, low country girl, I literally ran into the arms of my husband at age 15. Wow. Running down our high school hallway. Uh, he and his, I always say this story, his best friend made a bet on who could get the girl, the most girls phone numbers. Yeah. I was running late for class. Um, so I ran back to my algebra class to get my French book. Mm -hmm. uh, was running down the hall, literally ran into his arms next month well this is august so october will make 26 years we've been married that's amazing yeah absolutely amazing yeah. considered marriage today yeah i know i'm almost at seven and it's struggling <laughs> <Hang in laughs> well there. no it's not that bad it's there. struggling it but it's, it's work <laughs> it is work we change yeah I, definitely. I just talked about my i didn't know can you imagine if just a few years ago i'm 43 so three mm. years ago i discovered who i am mm. and why i'm here at 15, I had no clue. Yeah. When we got married, I was 17. I had no clue. I'm growing up with another guy who didn't have a clue. Right. We're, f we're learning as we're growing, but we're married. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's hard work. When, when did you get married? At what age? 17. At 17, really? At 17. Okay, you are I, Southern. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. That's not all. <laughs> so by the time I had graduated high school, I had a toddler. 
I was married to my husband, my high school sweetheart. Mm. And when I literally crossed the stage to receive my diploma, I was pregnant again Wow! with identical twins. Get out of here. I'm not lying. And two years later, yeah. I was pregnant again <laughs> with Destiny, my baby girl. That is the last one. <laughs> so you see how our life has been on fast yeah, forward. Yeah. I was not born with a cookie cutter life or a silver spoon in my mouth. I was dealt a hand just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I just kept playing. So my word to whoever's out there listening is keep playing. Um, but so for the talk show, um, when I left banking, wrote that book, mom died, all this stuff. Uh, Senator Pinckney, who I adore still to this day, who was killed at Mother Emanuel in Charleston. Mm -hmm. It's a very dear friend. We mm -hmm. went to the same school, grew up in the same neighborhood or community. And um, he appointed me as commissioner on the Technical College of the Low Country. Uh, one of the other questions was who was some of the people that identified leadership in you? And if I had to credit anyone, he would be one of the people mm. that I did because he saw something in me at the time that I did not see in myself. And so I'm serving at that time. I had not completed um, higher uh, education, mm -hmm. so I did not have a degree. I had an awesome job as a bank manager and I did not have a degree. I have a real story. Yeah. I think that's what really resonates with people. Um, but he did see something. So after uh, he was assassinated, of course, mm -hmm. I was inspired to actually run for his unexpired term. So mm -hmm. I campaign. I am not a politician. Yeah. However, because of my relationship with him, I wanted to honor him in that way. And so I ran to um, complete his term. Did not win. Landed in the middle. I was totally green. Didn't know anything about what I was getting into. But it was certainly out of my heart's desire for him and to honor him mm -hmm. as a friend and a mentor. But I did that. That threw me into the spotlight. It's point of my story, or this part of the story, is I was thrust into the media, mm -hmm. and radio, and television, not knowing where it was going to go. And, of course, I wrote my book. That came out. And then an opportunity presented itself to actually take the book into a show. Okay. And so now it's on the Now Network, N-O-W Network, television oh, nice. network nice. in Easley, South Carolina. It's a Christian broadcasting network. We just went from 20 million households to 65 million households. I travel once a month to the studio and welcome anyone that's bold and courageous, of course, yeah. enough to share their stories and inspire, motivate, and empower other people. That's really it. That's amazing. That's amazing. What's the name of the talk show? Courageous again? Conversations with Shree. Okay. Every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Okay. All right. Also, we are going to have to take a break real quick. Um, everybody out there listening, once again, I'm with Cherie Darian. Uh, what's your middle name again? We're Edelma. Edelma. Cherie Edelma Darian uh, of the Small Business Assistance Corporation, but not just the SBAC. She's with everything else, too, in South Carolina. She has oh, Amazing Wellness the, uh, a book. She has Testimony, A Second Chance. She has the Courageous Conversations with Cherie talk show. So we will be right back with her with the lightning round. I'm very excited to hear her answers to some of these questions. So uh, stick around. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Welcome back, Savannah, to the Savannah Business Showcase. Uh, this is Taraz, your host, uh, and I'm here once again with Sheree Edelma Darian of the SBAC, the Small Business Assistance Corporation here in Savannah, right off Liberty Street. Uh, and they're here basically for any entrepreneur. If you're ready, if you're in business, if you have your plan together and you need just a little bit of money to help you, or you need a lot of money to help you, go see Sheree. She's here for you. She's here for everybody in the community. Uh, so, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to put it through the lightning round. I had a bunch of random questions uh, just to find out a little bit more about you okay. and uh, about your life. Uh, you can answer them as short or as long as you want to. We just call it the lightning round because it sounds cool. Okay. All right. Uh, so first question, uh, how have you approached failure in life? By getting up, hitting a reset button. Honestly, ex learning to extend grace to myself. Um, I was... <laughs> I, I call myself a recovering uh, perfectionist okay. because there was a way, th I mean, there was a time when I wanted things a specific way, you know, it needed to be measurable. I came from an environment where we had quotas to meet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very responsibility driven. 
And so my standards are high. Ask my husband and my children <laughs> and anyone who's worked for me. Yeah. Uh, so, and then the, I think 12, 13 people I actually had to terminate in my time mm. in banking. So that just speaks to tolerance level. Um, thankfully, I'm not that person anymore, so I have a little bit more grace. But I would just say to anyone, look, as long as you're waking up every day, you have breath in your lungs, that's another chance. Yeah. Remember, I'm all about second chances. What did you want to be as a kid, and how does that relate to your current uh, profession? I never actually thought about what I wanted. And how I'm able to answer that so quickly is because I share this story all the time. I am a daddy's girl. Okay. Uh, I love, I adore my father. And uh, when I was growing up, he would always say to me that you are going to be a nurse. And because I respect him, love him, you know, I obeyed him. And Mm. so although I had children, got married early, all of that, what do you think I did? I became a CNA. Mm. That was it. I became, Mm. I received a certification in nursing and just basically still have the piece of paper to this day. And it was during my clinicals at a nursing home that I realized that this wasn't for me. This is what my father wanted me to do, but my heart wasn't in it. And uh, I actually had one experience quickly with a resident there and I saw how depressed she was. She wasn't um, from the area. Her family had placed her in this nursing home. She literally was in the room with her blinds closed. And it was my experience with her that kind of perked her up. And she really just needed that um, visitation. She right. just needed that human touch, someone to care and be there, that companionship with her, even though it was short lived for me. Uh, I remember going to the grocery store and buying tab soda yeah you remember that <laughs> yeah i never heard of tap <laughs> but anyway she wanted that and uh i got that for that beautiful lady and would paint her fingernails and this is probably too much information clean her dentures and all of that <laughs> but it was in that moment that i could not get attached i knew i couldn't get attached to people like that and um something happened to them ultimately they passed or something i'd be messed up yeah so like get me out of here yeah. as quickly as possible <laughs> yeah um who influenced you early in life and who's your mentor now? Wow. Early in life, of course, daddy's girl. Um, believe it or not, uh, just his presence and, and to the fathers. If you're there, are any fathers that are listening, I'm not sure if you're dad, mm-hmm, but your presence is powerful. And if my dad never purchased me anything uh, monetary, his presence alone is priceless. Mm-hmm. It's really his presence in my life impacted my life uh, that I could he could walk in this room right now and I'd be 12 again mm. <laughs> so he, he certainly has uh, influenced my life and still does to this day yeah uh, always champions me and and that alone is enough for me but um, today he remains a mentor for me um, I have some um, nationally known Uh, mentors Lisa Nichols with motivating the masses I adore her had an opportunity to share the same space with her get close to some of her um, staff Uh, so she's one um, I mean there's a plethora of them I don't know how many you want me to name uh, you're good good? good? and I am a dad it's probably the best part of uh, life right now Uh, well not right now but it's one of the most that's how I recognize myself I'm a dad first yeah yeah yeah, I was uh, definitely very rewarding um so you went. You told us about your failure. We had to close down your business uh, because of your mother's illness. Uh, so, what advice do you have for a person about to face uh, your same failure, that failure? Um, whether it's you know a loved one that's uh, battling a terminal illness or just a financial hardship, uh, could be divorce. You know, life happens to us all. Right. Um, Again, I I know I probably sound like a robot uh, with the second chances, but I it's who I am. Mm -hmm. And so that's always going to come through. Uh, There was a time when, again, I was sharing with you earlier that I could see the light at the end of the tunnel and thinking it would never, ever I would ever be out. Yeah. But I would encourage whoever's listening. Just don't give up. Don't Mm. give up. Take a break. If you need to take a time out, it is okay. Um, There's a big difference between uh, stopping and just completely quitting. Mm-hmm. I believe healthy pauses are okay. Right. And for me, um, <laughs> I believe I extended my pause <laughs> because there was a lot of uh, trying to figure it out, you yeah. know, instead yeah. of just allowing it to just flow and just be. 
Um, I'm all about being present in the moment, which is why I'm very thankful for this opportunity to share with you um, and all about actively listening. But sometimes in order to listen, you have to be quiet and be still. So if it's not moving at the speed or if there are things that is outside their control, I would say just get yourself together. Just be with yourself. Be one with yourself and your thoughts and journal. Journaling has always helped me. Put your thoughts on paper. Mm -hmm. um, it helps to see it, uh, not just hear the negative chatter, because our minds are always going, at least mine is. And um, so just, just kind of get back in alignment with your true self. If you see it, you can achieve it. I like, yeah, that's that's what I always tell myself a lot. Yeah. You see it, you can achieve it. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you, you have kids. So what are you going to, what are you going to, what did you teach your children about entrepreneurship? It's not a straight line, but to try it. Hmm. Like, I mean, I have a show that says Courageous Conversations with Shree. Um, I don't believe any of us, I don't, this is probably bad because I'm a commissioner on a college board. <laughs> But I don't believe all our lives are identical. I have identical twins, to, to be fair. Mm -hmm. They are as different as night and day. Mm. But the, the bond that they have, you cannot break. I'm very clear on that. And I said that to say that uh, none of our lives match 100%. Uh, and so go after what you want to do. You, it's interesting. There are children that, I shouldn't say children, uh, adults, young adults that have gone to college invest it or oh god have so much debt student loan debt and i know a lot of people can relate to that and then they get to this point in their life that they hate it just imagine if i went all the way through nursing school because i like to bring it back to me to be a true example mm -hmm. and then i decided one day i hate this yeah and then what now you have student debt but you have a degree i still have that cna certification as a reminder, that's not what I want to do. So I just say, be true to you. Yeah. And and that's what I would say to my children. Be true to who you are. What's the one thing in your business that drains you of energy? And what's the one thing ex that excites you? Oh, you know, there's nothing in my business right now that drains me. Okay. I'm so excited about it. I think it's because I had survived um, the bumps and the bruises. And so I'm so encouraged now because I have that pedigree that I can share it now and pay it forward with um, even your listening audience, that I can be transparent enough to say, okay, my, my highs as well as my lows. And it, if you're gonna accept the great parts about me, you gotta be willing to see the ugly stuff. Mm -hmm. what, what, is, what is something that you consume religiously? So it could be a blog, TV show, a food, a podcast. <laughs> That's <is> low. <laughs> that was below the belt. <laughs> What do I consume? My kids say my mind never turns off, so I'm always working. I'm al I'm always working, trying to help somebody else come up with the next best. How can I make an impact with my life? So I'm always working on me. Does that okay. make sense? Mm -hmm. So it, I'm reading constantly. That's just who I am. I, I just can't put things down. I'm always reading something to increase my level of uh, worth, uh, mm -hmm. value of um, value. I think that would probably be the more accurate road word that I could share with someone else. So mm -hmm. I always want to live full and I want to serve from my overflow. Um, I believe that you can't serve from an empty cup. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And so I keep myself full so that I can spill into someone else's life. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's, that's me. Makes a lot. Of sense. I've talked to a couple other guests on the show, and we always talk about the the ups and downs and the highs and lows. And sometimes you can run so far that you just crash. Mm -hmm. You know. But if you, yeah, you're right. You got to keep yourself full because you can't serve from an empty cup. Right. So I try to stay full so I don't ever want to be depleted again. Mm -hmm. And it's only because I can speak from being depleted. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to run out. And so n even now um, when I'm tired, I rest. Mm -hmm. It's simple, simple as that. I know, right? But you got to know yeah. I'm very ambitious. So for me to say time out or literally I'm just taking a bubble bath, mm -hmm. that's huge for me. Yeah. But I'm, I'm wired though. I love... I just love being busy and not just being busy, but being productive and, and making an impact. Yeah. And so. honestly, you're, you're the same as most people listening to this right now. So I'm sure that'll help a lot of people. Yeah. Because you're right. Yeah. Um, so that said, you like to read. What's your favorite book? The Bible. Okay. It is. It is my favorite book. I don't say that religiously. 
um, God is my life. Hmm. He, he is. And honestly, when I was going through my transition, I actually didn't read it for a while. In hmm. fact, I felt impressed um, to close it. Hmm. So this will have to be a follow-up conversation. Because <laughs> okay. I promise you, it was like, what do you mean close the Bible? Particularly for Christians that are listening, you better not close the Bible. Right, right. But for me, it was like, it's time to live it. Mm. So anyway, to be continued. To be continued. Uh, what's the last experience that made you a stronger person? I would say the experience with my mom. That You know, I look back over that time Therese and, and like how did I do that I'm sure other people around me my family my children my husband my sisters look at me and like okay because there were people that actually approached me during the funeral and said Cherie it's okay to cry hmm. but I had such a peace during that time yeah hmm. that's amazing Th yeah like there's no words so that is probably the most rewarding experience for me um, yeah, very powerful. What did you do growing up that got you into trouble? Nothing. <laughs> really? I'm I was okay. very obedient. I was okay. very sheltered. Okay. I know it's like, what? I'm serious. Now, when I became a teenager, that's something else. Okay. Obviously, I ran into the arms of a young man and he consumed the rest of my life. So <laughs> at 15, that was a big deal. That was still bet, pretty yeah. young. And then my, again, my life was fast forward ever since it was like I used to say I had to grow up fast mm -hmm. now I say I've I have an accelerated destiny mm. so there's a purpose in it it is what it is right it is what it is yeah I got married at 23 and I feel like that was young See? now that now that I look back on it so I definitely yeah, yeah. I have a son who uh is serving in South Korea okay. he's in the Air Force and He's determined not to get married before 30. And I'm like, what? But he, he is strong well. He's yeah. determined. He has goals. And he's proven that's right. I guess he's going to do it. Mm. So, But hey, to each his own. To each his own. Yeah. What is... What's the best gift you've ever given or received? Oh, God. The best. And I hate to... Well, I'm... I don't want to say hate. Hate is such a strong word. The best gift I've ever received was salvation, no. is salvation, um, because it was not traditional the way I did receive Christ. Um, so just a short answer, that's it. Okay. And um, I could elaborate at later. later. Um, but given, I think it was permission, uh, not that my mom necessarily, I think she needed permission to to transition when she did mm -hmm. and we had that conversation which I think it made her transition for me easier because I knew she was in a good space where she was ready she, and she said that so just to have that opportunity that's probably the best gift I was able to give mm. because that's just so fresh for me right now what story does your family always tell about you <laughs> oh my god which one <laughs> oh my god I don't, I don't know. Nothing's coming up. We would have to ask them. Okay. Now I'm going to have to go back home and ask them what story. I don't know. Okay. All right. we, that's fair enough. We could, we could uh, pass on that one. Okay. Um, so there's a concept in the business called the 80-20 principle, Pareto's mm -hmm. principle. 20% of your actions equal 80% of your results. Uh, so in your business, uh, past businesses, like what is the 20% of action is, that gets you the most results? Consistency, hmm. without a doubt. We can dream all day long. And I'm a dreamer, I'm a visionary, but we got to put some action behind it. We got to put some works to, um, you know, what we say. Everybody's doing a vision board nowadays. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it looks pretty. Yeah. But Sounds you... good. But where's the work? You got to do the work. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that your business is your life's calling? I believe where I am is exactly that. Yes, it is indeed. Is there a quote that's always been a mantra that you live by? I believe people um, the first time. When people tell you who they are, believe them the first time. Uh, and I, I say that one only because that's like the first one that popped in my head, but I found it to be true that um, I'm a believer of people. Mm -hmm. um, so I tend to extend that grace to other people. And um, some relationships, uh, you may have heard that when uh, there's, I guess when you mature, you get older, your circle gets smaller. Mm -hmm. And so throughout my transition, that was one of the 
biggest lessons and most difficult lessons that I had to learn, that there were people that I thought were with me and for me that were not. Mm. And uh, some of those relationships had to be severed um, in order for me to grow and go Mm -hmm. where I am now. Uh, A few more and we'll round it off. Uh, Do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert and why? Extrovert. I love I love engaging with other people. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I guess there are times when I'm introvert because I like my my own space as well. Right. And so in those times, and and I know how to set uh, healthy boundaries as well. So when I again the disconnect when mm-hmm. I need to shut down and just kind of regroup or replenish, refresh. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there's it's like no access, mm. and you know, yeah, I've learned to do that. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Uh, some Somewhere in the Caribbean. And the reason <laughs> okay. why I answer that is because I love the water. I think mm. it's very serene. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe a private island somewhere. That'd be nice. <laughs> uh, two more. If you had a superpower or ability, what would you choose and why? Oh, probably mind reading. I think people are interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think about a trip to Vegas. I uh, had an opportunity to take my girls with me. And so people watching was quite interesting <laughs> in Vegas, if you could imagine. I could, yeah. So just, yeah, I wonder what people are thinking half the time. I, that's probably a good and a bad answer because there's, think about our society today. It's, But if you knew, then you kind of would always be two steps ahead right yeah definitely yeah but then some people are scary i could tell you some things but oh my god (laughs) that makes a lot of sense with your talk show and and your books that you you want to know more about other people so it makes a lot of sense um last question advice for entrepreneurial kids and then parents start early sooner quicker faster and you are asking me about um I guess a young person who would want to be an entrepreneur. We have so many uh, budding entrepreneurs now, but I often think about um, if we think everybody should go to college for once, for for instance, uh, what if someone who knows or has, and this is personal for me based on the situation with my mom, if there is a little kid right now that has the cure to cancer, I wouldn't want them stuck in a cubicle just because they got a degree to be an engineer. Right. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So let these kids do what they naturally are here to do and start early. Like I have one granddaughter, her name is London Nicole, plug for London, <laughs> taking her to Disney in two weeks. Every day I get home and she said, Nana, guess what? I said, what? <laughs> she said, we're going to Disney. <laughs> so that's our little thing, but even now we're shaping her mind and I don't mean we're shaping her mind but we're cognitive of uh the things that fires her up and makes her excited and what she just naturally gravitates towards Mm -hmm. and um we're we're very very clear on that and just her personality you know Mm -hmm. uh her ability to be so loving and caring and compassionate for the dog yeah you know and other or if she's not really connecting with other people, strangers, what we're paying attention to a lot of different things. There's so much information that's coming at them and their little minds, mm-hmm. which their minds aren't small. It's amazing uh, how quickly they learn, but uh, we're just paying attention to the things that motivate, empower, and make her excited. Mm-hmm. And because that's exactly where she may end up being later on, but why not now? Like, why not start earlier? And uh, it's interesting, one of my guests and um, was a y- young lady who wrote a book. And um, I asked her, I said, did you, all, did you know you wanted to become an author? Uh, her family, her my mom and dad were actually about to separate, mm-hmm. or he had left the home. That made a tremendous impact on her and her siblings. And so she wanted to write a- about it. And thankfully they reconciled. Um, but she was able to put it in a book, and at nine years old, she's an author. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That's so very amazing, yeah. If you think about it, they're so smart. They're, they have the ability to do so much uh, sooner, quicker, faster. Think about uh, the web right now. Mm-hmm. Everything's right there, Facebook. We, we do things faster. So to the old school business owners out there, 
I think it's an awesome opportunity to get with some of these innovators um, and take part. Very true. I, li- I like that advice a lot. My, uh, I, th- I think it's Malcolm Gladwell uh, popularized the 10,000 hour rule mm-hmm. uh, where, you know, once, you know, you're an expert, you're the best once you hit 10,000 hours of practicing something. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you can start them earlier to get that 10,000 hours in by the time they're oh. early 20s, mid 20s. They're, they're going to be the best in the world. Oh, yes. You know, so yeah. that's, I, I like that a lot. I agree. Okay. All right. Well, that is our time. I wish we had more time. Maybe we could get you back on in the future where you have another another venture. I'm sure it's one coming sooner or later. Uh, so, Sari, uh, how can people find you? Uh, what's the best way for people to find you? Please. I um, thank you for extending uh, a minute to just wrap this up. But my goal here, my mission here in Savannah is to lend money to small business owners. I wanna be very clear with our audience. We have money to lend. Um, You are needed just as equally as we are needed to help you. We need, without customers, I mean, we don't even exist. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna be very clear um, that we're here and we have these funds available and not only the funds, but the technical assistance uh, as well. So even if you're just starting out and you don't have any business credit established yet, I would, encourage you to start some even if that means starting small so again i'm walking distance Mm -hmm. from you uh at 111 east liberty street Mm -hmm. uh, just a block over from the uh, saint john the baptist cathedral and uh, my number directly so you won't get uh, a secretary anybody you can call me directly (laughs) is 912-721 six three two eight and listen reach out send me an email s darian at sbac sav dot com uh, or just visit the website again s b a c s a v dot com and again yeah just waiting on your call awesome all right so once again i'm here with a great guest uh one that i greatly enjoyed uh sheree darian uh finder sbac sav dot com uh i can't I don't know how how much I could plug it, but look it up. Uh, So thank you guys for joining me again this week. Uh, You can find the show on uh, Facebook at the Savannah Business Showcase and on YouTube. You can listen to all the show's archives uh, if you're just catching the end of this uh, at Savannah Business Showcase on YouTube. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, Be the change you want to see in the world. You don't have to do anything great or amazing on a large scale because you can change somebody's life just right next to you. You can go down the road and find somebody you can help. So do something great this week. I believe in you. I love you. Talk to you next week.